Good afternoon, everyone. We are here to discuss about the size reduction process. Size reduction is reducing large solid masses such as chemical substances that are turned into small unit masses, coarse particles, or fine particles. It is commonly employed in pharmaceutical industries and is also referred to as combination and grinding. The size reduction operation can be divided into two major categories depending on whether the material is a solid or a liquid. And if the material is solid, the process is called grinding and cutting. And if it is liquid, emulsification and atomization. The objectives of size reduction is first to increase the surface area to enhance the rate of a physical or chemical process. Second is to effect the separation of two constituents in cases where one is dispersed in small isolated buckets. Third, to meet stringent specifications regarding the sizes of commercial products. The fourth is to accomplish intimate mixing of solids in solid-solid operation since the mixing is more complete if the particle size is small. And the last one is to improve dissolution rate, solubility, binding strength, and dispersion properties. The different mechanisms of size reduction. First, we will discuss about the factors affecting size reduction. For the selection mill, it is related to feed, milled product, safety, and economics. While the factors related to nature of raw materials affecting size reduction is first hardness and fibers. For hardness, it is easier to break soft material than hard material. For example, for iodine hammer, mill is used. For fibers, they are tough in nature. A soft, tough material has more difficulty than a hard, brittle substance. For example, Rawolfia ginger. Here, cutters can be used. For the first mechanism of size reduction, it is impact. This involves a hammer or a bat. They are used at high speed. Impact occurs when a moving particle strikes again a stationary phase. Particles break by a single rigid force. As you can see in the GIF, there are three types of impact. The first one is when the material goes to the hammer and the hammer is stationary. The second one, the hammer makes an impact on the rock or the particle. The third one is when they collide and they break. Particles break by a single rigid force. It involves usage of hammers or bars at high speed. Force applied exceeds strength of the particles. Impact occurs when moving particles strike against stationary phase. In the same way, particles moving at high speeds collide each other and produce smaller particles. This is the case in the third situation displayed on the right. The second type of different mechanism of size reduction is compression. Particle crushed between rollers by the application of force. They are crushed in the roller mill, for example. Material is crushed between two rigid forces. Particles fall between two rigid rollers and disintegrate into smaller pieces. As you can see in the picture or the GIF on the right. The third type of mechanism of size reduction is cutting. The material cut by a sharp and thin blade or cutter mill. It is useful for communicating the new surface created when cutting is used is less damaged 
compared to the other different mechanisms of production. The fourth one is the shear. It is a combination of cutting and crushing. The equipment consists of both knife and bars. It is produced by a fluid or by particle-particle interaction. In a good shearing unit, the knife is usually thick enough to overcome the shock resulting from a material heating. In an ideal shearing unit, the clearance between the knife and bar should be as small as practicable and the knife as sharp and thin as possible. It is noticeable that the particles produced from shear is more fine and smaller in pieces compared in cutting. The last type of mechanism is attrition. It arises from particles scraping against one another or in a rubbing action or fluid energy mill. Attrition involves breaking down of the material by rubbing action between two forces. For example, surface phenomena. It is generally necessary for fine grinding. It is breaking of particles due to friction or rubbing action between two particles. There can be two types of attrition. You can see there that the particle is being rubbed on the stationary surface, whereas there, two particles are rubbing on each other. Then, for the next topic, which is energy and power requirement, Angela Fering will now be discussing it. Moving on to the energy and power requirement in size reduction. The cost of power and energy is a major expense in size reduction, so the factors that control this cost are important. The work necessary to strain a feed material is stored temporarily in a solid as mechanical energy of stress. Since a unit area of a solid has definite amount of surface energy, the creation of a new surface requires work, which is supplied by the release of energy of stress when the particle breaks. So the crushing efficiency is defined as the ratio of the surface energy to the energy absorbed by the solids in the process of crushing. So equating it in terms of the energy absorbed it is equal to the surface energy multiplied to the difference of the area per unit mass of the product and the feed all over with the crushing efficiency. The mechanical efficiency is defined as the ratio of the energy absorbed to the energy input. So the equation of the energy input is equal to the energy absorbed all over by the mechanical efficiency given by this equation. So for the power, given that the end up is equal to the feed rate, power is equal to the energy input multiplied to the feed rate, which is equal to the equation E sub S multiplied to the quantity A sub WB minus A sub WA multiplied to end up all over the mechanical efficiency and the crushing efficiency. And since D sub S is equal to 6 over P sub S, A sub W, rho sub P, and arranging it in such a way that it will equal to A sub W, and equating it to the equation here, the power will now be equal to 6 times the feed rate times the surface energy all over the crushing efficiency, mechanical efficiency, the density of the particle multiplied to 1 over the sphericity of the product times the volume surface mean diameter of the product minus 1 over the sphericity of the feed times the volume surface mean diameter of the field. So for the Arrhenius law, which was proposed in 1867, it is stated that 
The work required in crushing or to crush a given amount of material is proportional to the new surface created or the increase in specific surface. It also gives reasonably good results for first grinding, in which there is a relatively small increase in surface area per unit mass. And it is given by the equation P over dt grade is equal to K sub R multiplied to 1 over D sub SB minus 1 over D sub SA, where KR is the Ritinger's law constant. For the Greek's law, which was proposed in 1885, the work required for crushing a given mass or amount of material is constant for the same reduction ratio of the initial particle size to the final particle size. It gives better results than the fine grinding where there is a much larger increase in surface area. And this is given by the equation P over N dot is equal to K sub K Ln of D sub SA over D sub SB. So for the Planck's law, it was proposed in 1852. It is said to be the most realistic method for estimating the power required for crushing and grinding. It is defined as the work required to form particles of size dp from a very large feed is proportional to the square root of the surface to volume ratio of the product. And it is the intermediate between the retainer's law and the Cake's law. And it is given by the equation P over N dot is equal to the K sub B over the square root of B sub C. Work index W sub I is the gross energy requirement in kilowatt hours per ton of feed needed to reduce a very large feed to such a size that 80% of the product passes a 100 micrometer screen. The relationship between K sub B and W sub I, if D sub P is in millimeter, P is in kilowatts, and M dot is in ton per hour, is given by the equation K sub P is equal to the square root of 100 times the raised to negative Q multiplied to W sub I or equal to 0 0.3162 W sub I. And if 80% of the peak passes a mesh size B sub P A and 80% of the product of mesh size W sub P B, the equation is given as P over M dot and is equal to 0 0.3162 W sub i multiplied to 1 over the square root of D sub P B minus 1 over square root of D sub P A. So in terms of differential forms of the loss, D of P over M dot is equal to K multiplied to D, sub, D of D sub S over D sub S raised to M. So for Kick's law, n is equal to 1. For Ritinger's law, n is equal to 2. And for the Bunn's law, n is equal to 1.5. The next topic is crushing loss. Crushing loss are run by three laws which are Ritinger's law, Kick's law, and bonds law. In a material processing industry, size reduction for comminution is usually carried out in order to increase the surface area because in most reactions involving solid particles, the rate of reactions is directly proportional to the area of contact with the second phase. Break a material into very small particles in order to separate the valuable constituents. Achieve intimate mixing. For the basic definitions, comminution is the whole operation of reducing the raw 
or to the size required for mechanical separation for metallurgical processing. Crushing for dry. Size reduction occurs prefer preferentially on large fragments. Grinding for wet. Size reduction is less selective. All pieces grounds to fine particles. Mechanisms of size reduction. Impact particles, concussion by a single rigid force. Compression, particle disintegration by two rigid forces. Shear, produced when a particle is compressed between the edges of two hard surfaces moving tangentially. And attrition, arises from particles scraping against one another or against the rigid surface. Energy for size reduction The energy DE required to affect a small change DL in the size of unit mass of materials is a simple power of the size. DE over DL is equal to negative CL raised to P where C is the constant related to the material. DE is the differential energy required. DL change in particle dimensions, and P, the exponent. Von Rittinger's Law, 1867 It states that the energy consumed in the size reduction is proportional to the area of new surface generated, putting P equal negative 2. Then, the integration gives E equals C multiply 1 over L sub 2 minus 1 over L sub 1. Writing C equal K sub R F sub C. E will be equal to K sub R F sub C multiplied to 1 over L sub 2 minus 1 over L sub 1. Where F sub C is the crushing strength of the material. L sub 1 and L sub 2 are the final and initial particle size, and K sub R is the Rittinger's constant. Application of Rittinger's Law It is applicable to brittle materials undergoing fine milling. This jury also ignored the formation before fracture. Kick's Law, 1885 it states that the work required is proportional to the reduction in volume on the particles concerned. Putting P equal negative 1, then the integration gives E equals C L N of L sub 1 over L sub 2. Writing C equals K sub R F sub C, then kick slow is obtained as E is equal to K sub k f sub c ln of l sub 1 over l sub 2 where k sub k is kicks constant this supposes that the energy required is directly related to the reduction ratio l sub 1 over l sub 2 which means that the energy required to crush a given amount of material from a 50 millimeter to a 25 millimeter size is the same as that required to reduce the size from 12 mm to 6 mm. For compression of large particles, kick slow or jury is useful. Bond slow, 1952. This third law states that the net energy required and comminution is proportional to the length of the new craft formed. Energy required is based on the geometry of craft expansion as it's open up. Neither of these two laws permits an accurate calculation of the energy requirement. Rittinger's law is part of the process where service is being created and holds most accurate. Rittinger's law is applicable 
mainly to that part of the process where new service is being created and holds the most accurately for fine grinding where the increase in surface per unit mass of the material is large. Kick's law are more closely relates to the energy required to effect elastic deformation before fracture occurs and is more accurate than Rittinger's law for coarse crushing where the amount of surface produced is considerably less. Bond suggested the law intermediate between Rittinger's and Kick's law by putting P equal negative 3 halves in the general equation as written below. Writing C equal 5 EI then we have E equals E sub I square root of 100 over L sub 2 multiplied to 1 minus 1 over Q raised to 1 half. Band terms EI the world index. L is measured in microns and expresses as the amount of energy required to reduce unit mass of materials from an infinite particle size to use size L sub 2 of 100 micrometer. Application of Bond's Law This theory is used for rough mill sizing. The work index is useful for comparing efficiency of milling operations. Limitation of Comminution Loss The size and shape which can be determined by these methods is not very perfect. It is determined on the average method. The methods discussed above can't measure the actual area of the particles so results may not be accurate. It is very difficult to determine accurate area of the finer particles by these methods. Even if the above conditions are determined, the surface areas of the cracks present with big particles would remain unaccounted. In conclusion, all the above equations are dimensionless. Rittinger's law deals with measurement of surface areas. Kick's law deals with volumes of products particles. Bond's theory deals with length of cracks formed. Kick's apply to coarse size greater than 100 mm. Band applies down to 100 micrometer. Rittinger applies to size less than 100 micrometer. To summarize, in Rittinger's law we have P equal negative 2.0 where energy alpha A new surface area formed. Band's law P equal negative 1.5 energy used in cracks propagation alpha A cracks lengths produced. Kick's law P equal negative 1.0 energy alpha A ratio of change in size. We now move on to size reduction equipment. Size reduction equipment is divided into crushers, grinders, ultrafine grinders, and cutting machines. Crushers do the heavy work of breaking large pieces of solid material into small lumps. A primary crusher operates on runoff mine material, accepting anything that comes from the mine phase and breaking it into 150 to 250 millimeter lumps. A secondary crusher reduces these lumps to particles perhaps 6 millimeters in size. Grinders reduce crushed feed to powder. The product from an intermediate grinder might pass a 40 mesh screen. Most the product from a fine grinder would pass a 200 mesh screen with a 74 mu meter opening. An ultra fine grinder accepts feed particles no larger than 6 millimeters. The product size is typically 1 to 50 mu meters. Cutters give particles of definite size and shape, 2 to 10 millimeters in length. The principal types of size reduction machines are as follows. For crushers, both coarse and fine, we have jaw crushers, gyratory crushers, crushing rolls, 
and under this we have smooth roll and tooth roll crushers. For grinders, both intermediate and fine, we have hammer mills and impactors, rolling compression mills, and under this we have bowl and, and roller mills. We have attrition mills and tumbling mills, to which under this we have rod, ball, pebble, tube, and compartment mills. Next, we have ultrafine grinders. Under this, we have hammer mills with internal classification, fluid energy mills, and agitated mills. Lastly, for cutting machines, we have knife cutters, dicers, and slitters. These machines do their work in distinctly different ways. Compression is a characteristic action of crushers. Grinders employ impact and attrition, sometimes combined with compression. Ultrafine grinders operate principally by attrition, and a cutting action is of course characteristic of cutters, dicers, and slitters. We first start with jaw crushers. In a jaw crusher, feed is admitted between two jaws, set to form a V-open at the top. One jaw, the fixed or anvil jaw, is nearly vertical and does not move. The other, the swinging jaw, reciprocates in a horizontal plane. It makes an angle of 20 to 30 degrees with the anvil jaw. It is driven by an eccentric so that it applies great compressive force to lumps caught between the jaws. The jaws open and close 250 to 400 times per minute. The most common type of jaw crusher is the blade crusher illustrated in the figure below. In this machine, an eccentric drives a pitman connected to two toggle plates, one of which is pinned to the frame and the other to the swinging jaw. Some machines with a 1.8 by, by 2.4 meter feed opening can accept rocks 1.8 meters in diameter and crush 1,200 tons per hour to a maximum product size of 250 millimeters. Smaller secondary crushers reduce the particle size of pre-crushed feed to 6 to 50 millimeters at much low rates of throughput. Next, we have the gyratory crushers. A gyratory crusher may be looked upon as a jaw crusher with circular jaws between which material is being crushed at some point at all times. A conical crushing head gyrates inside the funnel's shaped casing open at the top. As shown in the figure below, the crushing head is carried on a heavy shaft pivoted at the top of the machine. The speed of the crushing head is typically 125 to 425 gyrations per minute. Because some part of the crushing head is working at all times, the discharge from a gyratory is continuous instead of intermittent as in a jaw crusher. The biggest gyratories handle up to 4,500 tons per hour. The capacity of a gyratory crusher varies with the jaw setting, the impact strength of the feed, and the speed of gyration of the machine. The capacity is almost independent of the compressive strength of the material being crushed. Next, we have the smooth roll crushers. Smooth roll crushers have two heavy smooth face metals turning on parallel horizontal axis which works as elements of the smooth roll crusher illustrated in the figure. Particles of feed caught between the rolls are broken in compression and drop out below. The rolls turn toward each other at the same speed. They have relatively narrow faces and are large in diameter so that they can nip moderately large lumps. Typical rolls are 600 millimeters in diameter with a 300 millimeters face to 2,000 millimeters in diameter, with a 914 millimeters face. Roll speeds range from 50 to 300 rolls per minute. Smooth roll crushers are secondary crushers with feeds 12 to 75 millimeters in size and products 12 millimeters to about 1 millimeter. Next, we have the tooth roll crushers. In many roll crushers, the roll faces carry corrugations, breaker bars, or teeth. Such crushers may contain two rolls, as in smooth roll crushers, or, or only one roll working against a stationary curved breaker plate. A single roll tooth crusher is shown in the figure. 
Machines known as disintegrators contain two corrugated rolls turning at different speeds, which tear the feed apart, or a small high-speed roll with built transverse breaker bars on its face turning toward a large, slow-speed, smooth roll. Some heavy-duty tooth double roll crushers are used for the primary reduction of coal and similar materials. The particle size of the feed to these machines may be as great as 500 millimeters, and their capacity ranges up to 500 tons per hour. Next we have our grinders. First, hammer mills and impactors. These mills all contain a high-speed rotor turning inside a cylindrical casing. The shaft is usually horizontal. Feed draft into the top of the casing is broken and falls out through a bottom opening. In a hammer mill, the particles are broken by sets of swing hammers pinned to a rotor disc. Several rotor discs, 150 to 450 millimeters in diameter, and each carrying four to eight swing hammers are often mounted on the same shaft. The hammers may be straight bars of metal with plain or enlarged ends or with ends sharpened to a cutting edge. Intermediate hammer mills yield a product 25 millimeters to 20 mesh in particle size. In hammer mills, for fine reduction, the peripheral speed of the hammer tips may reach 110 meters per second. They reduce 0.1 to 15 tons per hour to sizes finer than 200 mesh. Hammer mills grind almost anything, tough, fibrous solids like bark or leather, steel turnings, soft wet pastes, sticky clay, and hard rock. For fine reduction, they are limited to the softer materials. An impactor, illustrated in the figure, resembles a, a heavy-duty hammer mill except that it contains no grate or screen. Particles are broken by impact alone, without the rubbing action characteristic of a hammer mill. Impactors are often primary reduction machines for rock and ore, processing up to 600 tons per hour. They give particles that are more nearly equidimensional than the slob-shaped particles from a jaw crusher or a gyratory crusher. The rotor in an impactor, as in many hammer mills, may be run in either direction to prolong the life of the hammers. Next, we have the, the rolling compression mills. In this kind of mill, the solid particles are caught and crushed between a rolling member and the face of a ring or casing. The most common types are rolling ring pulverizers, bowl mills, and roller mills. In the roller mill illustrated in the figure, vertical cylindrical rollers press outward with great force against a stationary anvil ring or bowl ring. They are driven at moderate speeds in a circular path. Blows lift the solid lamps from the floor of the mill and direct them between the ring and the rolls where the reduction takes place. Product is swept out of the mill by a stream of air to a classifier separator from which oversized particles are returned to the mill for further reduction. In a bowl mill and some roller mills, the bowl or ring is driven. The the rollers rotate on stationary axis, which may be vertical or horizontal. Mills of this kind find most application in the reduction of limestone, cement clinker, and coal. They pulverize up to 50 tons per hour. When classification is used, the product may be as fine as 99% to through a 200 mesh screen. Next, we have the attrition mills. In an attrition mill, particles of soft solids are rubbed between the grooved flat faces of rotating circular disks. The axis of the disks is usually horizontal, sometimes vertical. In a single runner mill, one disk is stationary and one rotates. 
In a double runner machine, both disks are driven at high speed in opposite directions. The, di the disks may be cooled with water or refrigerated brine to take away the heat generated by the reduction operation. The disks of a single runner mill are 250 to 1,400 millimeters in diameter, turning at 350 to 700 rolls per minute. Disks in double runner mills turn faster at 1,200 to 7,000 rolls per minute. The feed is pre-crushed to a maximum particle size of about 12 millimeters and must enter at a uniform controlled rate. Attrition mills grind from 1 to 8 tons per hour to, pro to products that will pass a 200 mesh screen. Next, we have the tumbling mills. A typical tumbling mill is shown in the figure. A cylindrical shell slowly turning about a horizontal axis and filled to about half its volume with a solid grinding medium forms a tumbling mill. In all tumbling mills, the, the grinding elements are carried up to the side of the shell nearly to the top from whence they fall on the particles underneath. The energy expended in lifting the grinding units is utilized in reducing the size of the particles. In some tumbling mills, as in a rod mill, much of the reduction is done by, by rolling compression and by attrition as the rods slide downward and roll over one another. In a large ball mill, the shell might be 3 meters in diameter and 4.25 meters long. The balls are 25 to 125 millimeters in diameter. The pebbles in a pebble mill are 50 to 175 millimeters in size. We now move on to, to hammer mills with internal classification. A hammer mill with, with internal classification is a micro at atomizer illustrated in the figure. A set of swing hammers is held between two rotor disks, much as in a conventional hammer mill. In addition to the hammers, the rotor shaft carries two fans, which draw air through the mill in the direction shown in the figure and discharge into ducts leading to collectors for the product. On the rotor disks are short radial veins for separating oversized particles from those of acceptable size. In the grinding chamber, the particles of solid are given a high rotational velocity. Coarse particles are concentrated along the wall of the chamber because of centrifugal force acting on them. Mills of this kind reduce 1 or 2 tons per hour of, to an average particle size of 1 to 20 mu meters with an energy requirement of about 40 kilowatt hour per metric ton. Next, we have the fluid energy mills. In these mills, the particles are suspended in a high-velocity gas stream. The suspending gas is usually compressed air or superheated steam admitted at a pressure of 7 atm through energizing nozzles. In the mill shown in the figure, the grinding chamber is an oval loop of pipe 25 to 200 millimeters in diameter and 1.2 to 2.4 meters high. Feed enters near the bottom of the loop through a Venturi injector. Fluid energy mills can accept feed particles as large as 12 millimeters, but are more effective when the feed particles are no larger than 100 mesh. They reduce up to 1 ton per hour of non-sticky solid to particles averaging 1 half to 10 mu meters in diameter using 1 to 4 kilograms of steam or 6 to 9 kilograms of air per kilogram of product. Loop mills can process up to 6,000 kilograms per hour. Next, next are agitated mills. For some ultrafine grinders op grinding operations, small batch non-rotary mills containing a solid grinding medium are available. The medium consists of hard solid elements such as balls, pellets, or sand grains. 
These mills are vertical vessels for the 1,200 liters in capacity, filled with liquid in which the grinding medium is suspended. In some designs, the charge is agitated with a multi-armed impeller. In others, used specially for grinding hard materials such as silica or titanium dioxide, a reciprocating central column vibrates the vessel contents at about 20 Hz. A concentrated feed slurry is admitted at the top and product with some liquid is withdrawn through a screen at the bottom. Agitated mills are especially useful in producing particles one mu meter in size or finer. And lastly, for cutting machines, we have knife cutters. A rotary knife cutter, as shown in the figure, contains a horizontal rotor turning at 200 to 900 rolls per minute in a cylindrical chamber. On the rotor are 2 to 12 flying knives with edges of tempered steel or estelite passing with close clearance over 1 to 7 stationary bed knives. Feed particles entering the chamber from above are cut several hundred times per minute and emerged at the bottom through a screen with 5 to 8 millimeter openings. Sometimes the flying knives are parallel with, with the bed knives. Sometimes, depending on the properties of the feed, they cut at an angle. Rotary cutters and granulators are similar in design. A granulator field yields more or less irregular pieces. In this portion, we will compare grinding and crushing operations. So what makes grinding and crushing similar, and what makes them different from each other? But let us first discuss about the mechanism of size reduction. Size, redu size reduction, a commonly known in mineral processing as comminution, is the reduction of materials from their average particle size to smaller particle size. Crushing and grinding operations are both part of mechanisms of size reduction. In general, there are four phases of size reduction. The first phase is compression. Compression is a slow process wherein the feed material size is reduced when it comes between a stationary platform and a heavy moving platform. The second phase is impact. In this phase, the feed material size is reduced and it gets hit by a moving platform at a high speed. The third phase is attrition. In this phase, the feed material size is reduced by the application of shear stress when it comes between platforms moving relatively fast with each other. The fourth phase is cutting. In cutting, the feed material size is reduced when it comes between sharp edges of moving or rotating blades. The first phase, which is compression, is part of crushing operation, while the second phase and the third phase, impact and attrition, are parts of the grinding operation, as seen in the diagram. In terms of similarities, crushing and grinding operations are both size reduction processes. The differences are the equipment, type of feed and product, pacing, methods, stages of operation, and final product. First, first, crushing and grinding operations differ in equipment used. used. As mentioned, specific equipment for crushing are jaw crushers, gyratory crushers, crushing rolls, and cone crushers. For grinding operations, the specific equipment are mentioned as well, such as hammer mills, impactors, rolling compression machine, attrition mills, and revolving grinding mills. In terms of methods, in terms of methods, since grinding and crushing operations are both part of size reduction mechanisms, they are usually sequential with one another. In general, crushing does the initial breaking of large pieces of pieces of solid materials such as boulders and turns it into lumps. Crushing also uses a dry process wherein no water or moistener is added to the feed. Grinding then comes after crushing, 
where it reduces the pieces from the crusher into finer particles or powder. As mentioned earlier, compression is part of the crushing process, while attrition and impact are parts of the grinding process. Grinding uses either a dry or wet process, but usually uses a wet process wherein water is added into the feed that makes us blurry in order to reduce the product into finer particles. In terms of basing, in terms of basing, crushing is usually a slow process or uses slow, slow speed machines since the feed going in the crusher is larger and given the power consumption. Crushing requires high work and high pressure mach machines. On the other hand, grinding is usually a fast process due to machines operating at higher speeds because of the less pressure needed. Additionally, grinding is more energy intensive compared to crushing. In terms of the type of feed in product, since the initial feed undergoes crushing operation first, therefore, the feed materials are larger in terms of volume and diameter, having about 300 to 1,500 millimeters as initial size. The products from the crushing are usually the feed materials for grinding. Therefore, the feed materials for grinding are reduced in size compared to crushing operations having an initial size of 1 to 50 mm feed. Products of crushing are usually abrasive in coarse, whereas the products of grinding are finer and smooth, having powder-like texture. Crushing in a building process is usually done in three stages, primary crushing or coarse crushing, secondary crushing or intermediate crushing, and tertiary crushing or fine crushing. Grinding on the other hand is usually done in two stages, primary grinding or coarse grinding, and secondary grinding or fine grinding. The feed size in feed size in primary crushing usually ranges from 300 to 1,500 millimeters and the product size is 100 to 300 millimeters and is operated usually in a jaw or gyrator crusher. The product from the primary crushing is the feed in the secondary crushing. Therefore, the feed size usually ranges from 100 to 300 millimeters and the product size is 10 to 50 millimeters and is usually operated in a cone or roll crusher. The product from the secondary crushing is the feed used in tertiary crushing. Therefore, the feed size usually ranges from 10 to 50 millimeters, and the product size is 5 to 10 millimeters, and is usually operated in a roll crusher. The feed size in primary grinding usually ranges from 1 to 50 millimeters and the product size is 0.3 millimeters or 300 microns and is operated usually in rod mills. The product from the primary grinding is the feed in the secondary grinding. Therefore, the feed size usually ranges less than 0.5 millimeters and the product size is less than 0.1 millimeters or 100 microns and is usually operated in ball mills. That's all and thank you. That's all and thank you for listening to our presentation.